Father, thank you. You didn't say let everything that had breath. You said praise the Lord. And so I bring to you my praise this morning. The Bible said to give us, give you the fruit of our lips. And I just want to thank you for one more day. I want to thank you for the movement and activity in my lips. I want to thank you for my right mind. I want to thank you for my family doing fine. And thank you for Sister Bartholomew. God, we are standing because you're standing in us. We're standing because you're standing with us. We're standing because you stood for us at Calvary's cross. And I just want to say thank you. Have your way in this place. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In the name of love, every day, in the name of Jesus, all the people said amen. amen. Respect and honor to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Respect to the office of this church and to the choir of musicians. And respect to all of y'all, my father's children, the ushers, and uh, all the people that's here. We're grateful also for my wife and my daughter and my son in his absence. Turn with us to the book of John, chapter 3. Familiar passage of scripture. You may be seated, my wife. John chapter 3, verse number 16. For God so loved the world. Amen. For God so loved. For God so loved. That's something right there that we can be thankful for. That's something right there that we can shout about. Because the text says, For God so Loved. And the reason that's so powerful because there are so many people who don't feel nobody loves them. Is that right? They feel like nobody cares. They, they feel like they don't exist. Amen. But the text said, for God so loved. That's what the text said. And so I don't care who feels like that. The, the Bible said that God loved you anyhow. Mama didn't want you. God still loved you because he the one that made you. Huh? Daddy, didn't, Daddy didn't do right by you, but God still loved you. The reason you're still here because God still doing right by you. Huh? God so loved. And guess what? It didn't put no qualifiers on that. He didn't say he just loved the good folk. Huh? That, he loved everybody. Uh, whoever you are, wherever you are, however you are, whether you male or female, black or white, the text said God so Love. And that's powerful because sometimes some folk feel left out. Can't get away. Both folk feel left out, but guess what? God loves the poor folk. And the poor folk can say, well, he, he, he must not love me because I'm still poor. But guess what? God woke you up this today. No matter how much money you got in the bank, no matter how big your house or car, or whether you got a house or car, no matter what your age is, God loves you. Read not know because he woke you up this morning. He looked past what you wasn't to see what you was. And what you was is a, is a, is a creature made in his image and in his likeness. And guess what? That shows that God loves you. And some folks got questions today about whether or not God loves me based on how I feel. But God's love is not conditioned by the way we feel. Isn't it right? The Bible said we walk by faith and not by sight. Your feelings can fool you. You done found many times your feeling was wrong. You thought this way about a person and you found out the person was different. You thought this way about a situation and the situation was as hard as you thought. Your feelings can fool you, but your faith will always lead you right. God so. Love. Some folks say, oh, well, catch an hell, Ram. If he loved me, why am I catching hell? Because he loved me. That seems that crazy. 
crazy, don't it? But can I take you back to Jesus? That, that you, do you remember how bad they beat him? And the Bible said he would be beyond recognition. The Bible said his visage was marred. That means you couldn't tell who he was by his face. They had beat him so bad. But why did God let him get beat like that? You know why he let him, he let him get beat like that, you know? Because he was taking the punishment that do for us. Huh? That's why he got beat like that because the sin that we commit it required judgment. Huh? And because God loved us, Christ was our substitute. Christ paid the debt that we were due to pay, and Christ paid it because God loved us. God so loved. And when you begin to think about God and, and you think about the text, say God so loved. Love is one of his most awesome attributes. The scripture said it's so awesome that the Bible defines him as love. The Bible said for God is what? Love. The, the book said the very essence of God is that his loving nature defines who he is. Why did he make the earth in the first place? You know why he made it? Because he loves man. He knew on the sixth day, I'm on this world that I'm, I'm going to present it to him. And so he made your blessing before he made you. God made your blessing before he made you. Why? Because that's how much he loved you. God's nature is that of love. But there's so many awesome attributes, amen, that's a part of his love. In the book of Psalm number 86, verse 15, the Bible said, But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion uh, and, and gracious and long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and in truth. That's what the text said about God, who he is, he said, the text said that God is what? Full of compassion. Sometimes I mean, we can go to folk and find they don't care. Hmm? We can tell them about our deepest pain and some of them will laugh at you. You can tell them about your sorrows and some folks say, I don't want to hear it. But ain't you glad that you can get up in the middle of the night and find that God is still sitting on the throne? Find that his ear is waiting to hear what you got to say. Ain't you glad that you go to him five, ten, twenty times a day? He don't get tired of listening to you. Why? Because he loves there are some folks that I'm tired of hearing. I don't want to don't talk to me no more. But see, God says, call on me, and I will answer you and show you grace and mighty things that you know not. Don't get tired of talking to God because God is not tired of listening to you. Why? Because he loves you so much. Much. The text said he is gracious, amen. He's full of grace. And, and what is this grace? Unmerited favor. Something we could not earn. Some folk will deal with you based on who you are. God will deal with you no matter what you are. God loves you as you are. God made you who you are. And he loves you. But there are some folk that look and say, you're too ugly to be loved. There's some folk that look at and say, you ain't got enough money for me to waste my time with you. There's some folk that look at and say, you ain't got enough stuff, amen, for, me, for us to be in a relationship. But God loves you as he is. The text said, not only gracious, he's long-suffering. I'm glad that he's long-suffering because that means that he done put up with Larry a long time. Larry he always been saved. Larry always wanted to go to church. Larry always wanted to hear the word of God but the text said I mean, he's long suffering. That means that I mean, he suffers long while he was waiting on me. He knew that I was going to get it together after a while. He knew that I was tripping when I was younger but he knew at the proper time I was going to respond to what his word said and so he was holding out until I changed. Now, what did Joe say? All the days of my appointed time up away until I changed up. But God was the first one that had that sin. I'm going to wait on Larry. I could have killed him the first time he seen him. But because I love him. He's he, he seen him, but I'm going to hide it. Ain't you glad that God will hide it? He hid it. He'll hide your sin. Uh, you might say, what is hiding there? It's hiding under the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The text said, not only is he long-suffering, but he's plenteous in mercy and truth. And that's powerful because mercy covers, the Bible said, a multitude of my fault. Larry ain't all that he should be, but Larry can testify that 
God made that repentance than what he used to be. And that's because of the mercy that he's working in me. The working, the mercy that he's working on me. And God so loved Larry. And the reason I know he loved because the other word says he put this in truth. Amen. What can try Transform us. Nothing but the truth. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, if you are my disciples, if you continue in my word, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. I used to be shackled by my sin. I used to be shackled by my shame. But the truth came and set me free. Anybody thankful for the truth that God will look beyond your fault and see your need? Anybody thankful for the truth that Jesus will die on the cross to get you out of jail, to get you out of hell?
only do the Father love you, but the Son love you. What he said in John chapter 10, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd laid down his life for the sheep. What a God. That's some kind of God that I love you so much, I want to die. So you can live. If you're out here feeling sorry for yourself, Ain't nobody care about you. Ain't nobody watching you. Ain't nobody want you. Jesus showed how much he wanted you when he went to the cross. Not only went to the cross, he went on your cross. Because the Bible said the one to see the death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through his Christ, the Son of God, Jesus took your cross. That's how much he wanted you saved. That's how much he wanted you delivered. That's why, how much he wanted you to walk on the streets. That pain would go with glory. He wanted to stay. He wanted to take you to a place. Ain't no sickness over there. Don't need no doctors over there. He ain't, ain't nobody footprinting over there. On that other side, nobody has to pop wheels. Nobody has to run from evil. Every day is high. Every day. The Sabbath. The Sabbath will have no end. That's how much he love. But that's the father. That's the son. That's the third person in that trinity that loves us. And that's the Holy Spirit. Did you know the Spirit loves you? Did you know that? Why? Because he is what? He is God. You know what I say? In the book of John chapter 16, verse 7, Jesus said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for me, for you that I go away. But if I go not away, he said, the comforter will not come unto you. He said, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. That right there is saying that not only do the Father love you, but the Son love you, and the Holy Spirit too. Anybody been born again? Jesus said in the book of John, he said, Mama, now I say unto you, you must be born of the water and the Spirit. Some folk, amen, they come in, they, 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 they say that you the life of God, and they, they say they want to join the church, but you got to be born again. You can have your name on the earth of the road, but If you don't have the spirit, you don't belong to God. You got to have the spirit of God. How can you get the spirit of God? You got to submit yourself to it. In the book of John, chapter 14, the Bible says, if you love me, keep my commandments. He said, the me and the Father will make our home with you. We want the Holy Spirit to want to abide in you. But if you let him abide in you, he'll lead you and he'll guide you. Anybody can test it. That when you're out and you're about, you glad that you got a God. I don't have to have a GPS. I got the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit takes the big this turn right here. The Holy Spirit says, Go over there. That's what the Holy Spirit will do. He will lead and guide you unto all truth. You know why he'll do that? Because he loves you. The Spirit of God loves you. And if I glad that the Holy Spirit loves you, the text said in the book of John, chapter 6. Verse 44, he said, no man can come to me except the Father, which has sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. And you may say, well, what that takes got to do with the Holy Ghost? Well, when the preacher preaches the word of God, and the Holy Ghost is in the field, the Holy Ghost will give you illumination, the Holy Ghost will give you understanding, the Holy Ghost will pull you to the altar, the Holy Ghost said, what must I do to be saved?
because when you've been impacted by the Father, and when you've been impacted by the Son, and when you've been impacted by the Holy Spirit, Mother Stella, he gives you a new, a new nature. The things that you used to do, you don't have to do them no more. And when you see God so love, the church is supposed to so love. Did you hear me? The church is supposed to have the same nature as the Father, as the Son, and as the Holy Spirit. Am I right? I, I mean, the text say, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. And all things become new. I believe Paul told, you know, over there, and I think it was the book of Philippians, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And you may say, what mind did Jesus have? Jesus so loved you that he was willing to die for you. That's the mind that Christ has. And that's the mind that his church has. Did you hear me? That's the mind that his church has. You don't read that, do you? This is John 3.16, right? First John 3.16 says, Sister Jones, this is how we know what love is. He lays down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our life for our brethren. That's in the Bible. When you look at people, you're supposed to see people as God sees people. And the thing about God that we like we love the fact, Sister Lily, that he looks beyond our, our faults and he sees our needs. When you read John 3.16 as a Christian, the first thing you ought to have is appreciation because you're in the verse. The reason you're in the verse because you and I was in the world and God saw us in the world, but he wanted us in the word. But in order to get us in the word, he had to pull us out of the world. And that what Jesus said? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can go to the Father except by me. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said in the book of John, and you can't get to the Father unless you come through the Son. You and I was in the world. We acted like the world. We talked like the world. We we loved like the world. We was all about the world. But because God was willing to look past what we was doing, look past what we was not, to make us what we could be in Him, He was willing to put our sin behind Him. As far as the East is from the West, so far as He removed our sin and transgression from us. Folks see you. What the 
the scripture in the letter of need from the Lord says so. When you get out of your shame, when you get out of your fear, you're going to tell people what God has done for you. Some of them going to get delivered. Some of them are going to praise God. Some of them going to become priests. Some of them going to become deacons. Huh? But you got to step outside of you. You got to step into Christ. When you step into Christ, Christ is going to make sure you step into glory. And God don't want you to just come by yourself. He wants you to praise. Get to focus your pain. Your friends, your family, your enemies, your co-worker. God wants all of them to say. That's what John 3.16 teaches. The church is supposed to have the same attitude as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't come to play. He came to save. Jesus didn't have this church built. So we just come in here and look at each other. Did y'all hear what I said? Yes, we're supposed to come in here and worship. But we're supposed to leave and serve. Serving the will of God. Doing those things that honor him. Doing those things that make folks see him in you. Let your light so shine before me they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. God so loved. The Father so loved. The Son so loved. The Spirit so loved. Let us so love. Brother Claudius, come here. Brother TJ, come here. 